Kayla Cinnamon is the PM on the new Windows terminal uh, for Windows, and you can get it now through the Microsoft Store, and it's great. You can customize it if you like JSON. And uh, there's a lot of fun projects out there on GitHub uh, doing crazy things with it. So we'll turn it over to Kayla now. Thank you, Kayla. So just a quick introduction. My name is Kayla Cinnamon, and I am the program manager on Windows Terminal. So I work with Terminal every day, working with the community, working with developers, and we just want to make the Terminal the best command line experience on Windows. So in terms of a quick update of where the team is at right now, we're working towards getting V1 out the door. Um, so right now it's a lot of bug fixes. We aren't taking any more features. We're just trying to make sure Terminal is as polished as it can be uh, for a V1 release. So that's what's up right now. And I want to show you today just some fun features that we have in Terminal that make uh, it work really well with WSL. So I can open my Terminal here. I'll just run my dev build from master. So this is an open source project. We have everything on GitHub. And this is my uh, default terminal setup that I have. So this is PowerShell core running. And then I have a bunch of different uh, shells or command line applications that I can use here in my dropdown. Um, so some cool features that we have, if I did LS here and wanted to search through the prompt I just had, if I did control shift and F, you can search through the terminal. So I can just start searching for desktop, let's say, um, and it's showing up a few times. So if you ever needed to search through your prompt, you can do that. And you can also uh, case match. So if you wanted to be a little bit more specific, you can match the case here as well. That's a fun little search feature that we have. Um, and then I also want to show you some customizations that are, make Terminal really fun. Um, so we do have this fun retro effect. So if I open my PowerShell, you can see that I have this raster font going on in here, but it also has um, some glowing text and some scan lines coming across. So this is actually a community contributed feature and it just makes your terminal feel like back in the old days and it's kind of fun to play with. Um, so if you do want to have this, I'll show you how to set this up right now in the settings file. So as Hayden did mention earlier, we have a settings file that is in JSON. Um, we are hoping to get, or we're planning to get a settings UI in V2 of Terminal. So that is coming soon. Uh, we are not just, we're just not developing on it right now because we're trying to get V1 out. Um, but if you do want this cool retro effect, you can have experimental retro effect Retro terminal effects set to true right here, and this will make your text glow and you'll have the little scan lines coming through. It does work a little bit better on lower DPI displays, so it might be harder to see on my laptop, but if you have a monitor um, that's lower DPI, it will look a whole lot better. Um, some other cool things that make terminal work really well with WSL is we do automatically detect any distro that you have on your machine. So I, in my dropdown, have Ubuntu because this is the one I use most often, but I do actually have a ton of WSL distros installed on my machine. So another Ubuntu version, Kali, OpenSUSE, Debian. Um, I just hide them from my dropdown because I don't go into all of them every day. Uh, so the way I do that is I set hidden equal to true. So if you want to have a few of them show up, you can change this to false, and then this will show up in the dropdown. So now I have Ubuntu 18.04, and this is just my 18.04 distro here. So if you want to customize how your terminal looks based on which distros you're using most often, uh, you can do that here. And another tip that I'd like to give is when you do get your distros automatically detected, the starting directory is actually on your C drive. And if you're using WSL, you obviously want to be on the Linux side. So the way you can fix that is by changing your starting directory to this line, but it depends on your distro and also depends on your username. So the way to get this, the easiest, is if you run explorer.exe dot in your home directory, you'll get uh, this uh, file path here, and then you can copy and paste this into your starting directory line, and then you should just always start in your home directory. So I know that's a feature that we don't have yet, but this is a way to get around it. And then another thing, if you have a ton of distros and you don't want to customize each one, like let's say I want to use Cascadia code for every um, profile that I have, I can set this up here at the top. So there's this architecture here in our profiles that ships um, in box today. So if you download it for the first time, you'll have this already set up. 
but if you already have the terminal from a prior install before it was released, you'll have to add this in by hand, but it is just defaults, and then you put your profiles into the list, and then you can set any property here, and it will affect every profile below. So I do have font face, Cascadia code, so all my profiles will use Cascadia code, but I could also do something like cursor shape, and then pick my cursor shape here, and it will affect all of my profiles as well. And I know this is JSON, I know this is like really gross to type into, and you might think like, I don't know uh, what properties are available to me, what I can use. We have a JSON schema in GitHub, so it will automatically start filling in your um, JSON file if, if you're using a proper editor, so VS Code does handle this properly. Um, that's my default JSON text editor. So if I wanted a specific cursor shape, I can see what my cursor shapes my cursor shape options are here on the right, and then just pick whichever one I like best. So when I'm presenting, I do prefer filled box because I feel like that's the easiest to see. So now you can see I have a little filled box here on the left. So this is just some easy ways to customize, especially when you have a ton of uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux distributions on your machine. And then if I scroll all the way to the bottom, so these are all my color schemes here, uh, some fun things in VS Code is you can get a little color picker. If you don't want to go find some color scheme, you want to edit it here in your editor. VS Code does give you a color picker, which is really nice. And then if I keep going all the way down, I have a bunch of key bindings. So I did, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but we also have panes. Um, so let's say I wanted to open a new pane. This is my custom key binding for opening a new pane. So let me just clean this up a little bit. If I did control and backslash, so using this split horizontal up here on the top, I'll get a new pane of my default profile. So that is this is automatically using default, but I might want to go a step further and set a specific profile to open when I want a new pane or a new tab. So I can do that by adding a new command here, and I'll walk through this with you because that is a little bit long. But I can start with keys, and let's say I want to do my Ubuntu distro. I can start typing something like Control Shift, Control Plus Shift Plus U. So I know I'm using my Ubuntu distro, and then I'll do Command, and you can see the schema is helping me too. I'll do Command, a new object, and I'll do Action, and this will be a Split Pane, and then. The split type will be horizontal, and then the profile that I'll use, so I'll do profile, and we'll do Ubuntu, so that's the name of the profile. If I did that, and then I close this one, and did you, I'll get my Ubuntu profile here. And to show you, it's Ubuntu, I have it up here on the top, and then if I open a new tab, it's that fun background that I have as well. So that's one way to customize how you open new panes. You can do the same thing with tabs. Um, but if you want to go a step further, we do also have command line arguments. So if you wanted to start the terminal in a specific configuration, you can do so using command line arguments. So let's say I wanted the same exact thing that I just did, but on startup. I can start typing wt-d So This will open terminal in my current directory, and then I'll split it with the semicolon, and then I can do split pane. And then the profile that I'm going to use, so it's dash P, the Ubuntu profile, and then a dash capital H will get me a horizontal pane split. So then that will launch terminal in the current directory I was in, so I was in desktop, and then also Ubuntu there on the bottom, so PowerShell core on the top, Ubuntu on the bottom. So what's really great about this is you can make custom shortcuts and throw them onto your desktop. I have dev set up here, and you can have the same thing going on. Um, and then if you have different projects and you have different configurations you want, you can start them up uh, with just one click, which is really nice. And then the very last thing I wanna show you, this is something that is very fresh. Um, this build that I have that I'll run is from the developers as of yesterday, so this isn't released yet. So I'm just gonna run the executable from this folder that I have. Um, so there is a bug that we have where mouse events do not go through to WSL applications. So if I run Midnight Commander, this bug has been fixed in, it's not in master yet, it's still coming in, but I wanted to show you. So now if I start clicking through Midnight Commander, the mouse events go through. So this is something that has been highly requested. Uh, we call it VT mouse mode, um, but you can now get mouse events 
once this comes out um, in a servicing release soon, this is not out yet. Um, this is very fresh, but I wanted to show you that this is something we're working on. So that, those are all the fun things I wanted to show you today about Terminal, and then I'll just give you some quick info on things you can do to get in touch with me. Um, so I am on Twitter. My Twitter is at cinnamon underscore MSFT. If you want to read about how to do all these new features I showed you, um, I do write a blog with every release. So that is documented here at aka.ms slash DLI blog. And then if you have any feature requests or bugs you'd like to file, or if you want to write code for Terminal, we are an open source project. And you can go to github.com slash Microsoft slash Terminal. And if you want to play with it today, you can install the preview from the Microsoft Store. It is available now. And the V1 release will be in May of this year. So it is coming very soon, just a couple months away for V1. Um, and we're really excited. So I wanted to thank everybody from Canonical and Hayden as well for having me. And I hope you guys have a fun time at WSLConf. Thank you, Kayla. We had some questions. The general availability date for the new Windows terminal. It will be build that we have. Very good. So build. whenever build happens. Yeah, uh, and what form it takes, right? Well, yeah. Thank you for joining right. here. Thank you, Kayla. We appreciate it. Thanks.